thousand square roots with negative numbers involved. So we're going to start expanding into what we call the imaginary numbers or the complex plane. Okay, square root of seven. So let's look at these problems. We've got a seven here and 21 is 3 and 7. So I can notice already that there is a pair of 7s here. So we're going to pull out that pair of 7s. So there's the number 7 that escapes. Square root, we do have a number left in the radical. The number left in the radical is the number 3. Now, because of the negative signs, we define the square root of negative 1 to be equal to a number we call i. So, notice that there are two negatives, one here and one here. So that means we are going to have two copies of i, i and i. So now, simplification happens. Let's see, we end up getting 7i squared radical 3 and i squared, remember i was defined to be the square root of negative 1, so when we do an i squared, we get the number negative 1. Negative 1 times 7 means negative 7, and then there's your square root of 3. So the final answer to this problem would be negative 7 square root of 3. It's kind of interesting to take two radicals and multiply them to get a negative number. Okay, next problem. It looks like we have a 32 on top. 32 breaks down into a 4, 8. Whoops, this is supposed to be in blue. 4, 8, 4, 2, 2, 2, and 4 over here is 2, 2. So it looks like we have, and let's do the bottom at the same time. We have, here we have a 4, 4, and a 2, 2. So, on the top, we have two different radicals here. On the top, we end up escaping a 2 and a 2, but we end up leaving that 2. So on the top, we're going to have 2 times 2. We do have one imaginary unit, and then inside of the radical, we still have that number 2. And in the bottom, we have a pair of twos, pair of twos, and everything escaped. And that's two times two. Notice, by the way, I do know that the square root of 16 is four, but practicing this breakdown helps with future problems, so it's kind of a cool way to see it. Okay, but at any rate, simplify what we can. Looks like the final answer to this problem is simply going to be an i times the square root of two. Okay, try one more, or a couple more. Let's try a couple more, but you try these ones on your own. Radical negative 72 over radical negative 3, and then radical negative 2 times 30, radical 32. Pause the video, give them a shot, and then let's do them together here now to see what they turned out to be. So 72 is 8 and 9, 8 is 4, 2, and 4 is 2, 2. 9 is 3, 3. So it looks like on the top we have a pair of twos, a pair of threes, imaginary unit, and leftover two. On the bottom, we just have the three, so we're just going to be left with that radical three that doesn't escape, but we do have an imaginary unit two because of the negative. So we can cancel out those i's, and we have. 6 rad 2 over radical 3. And for politeness sake, let's rationalize our denominator by multiplying top and bottom by rad 3. Because then on the bottom, that pair of 3's, we forced it to escape. We assisted the, uh, the jailbreak there. And in the top, we have 6 and 2 times 3 both in the radical. So hopefully you got 6 rad 6 over 3. And then over on the other side, we have 2, which is all by its lonesome, so that's fine. 4, 8, 2, 2, 4, 2, and 2, 2. And that means we have, oh, 1, 2, 3 pairs of 2. 2, 2, 2. In addition to the negative sign, which gives me an i. So the answer to this problem 
is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 and also the imaginary unit of i for 8i.